Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art behind farming. I'm your host, Om Ledu. In this episode, we're going to build a split density mob farm. For this design, I tried to get the rates as high as I could possibly make them. We even have a funnel that will bring the experience to you as you AFK. All in all, I am super duper happy with how this design turned out. I even had to build faster item sorters to keep up with the rates provided by this farm, which we will build near the end of the video. But after 15 minutes of AFK, these are the average rates that I received. I mean, more than 7 stacks of gunpowder, more than 7 stacks of bones, it even consecutively received some ominous bottles. And then depending on what biome you build this over, you can get biome specific drops as well. And those rates were just for the 15 minute test. For the hour test, I ended up getting over 13 double chests full of stuff, about 14,000 total items, including 1,600 gunpowder per hour, plus over 1,900 bones. That is a ton of bone meal. Then we also have all of the various other drops, like ominous bottles from pillager captains or the redstone dust from the witches. And since they buffed how much redstone dust witches drop, we actually get a good amount of it. And then if you build this over the ocean, you'll of course end up with a ton of nautilus shells. And regardless of where you build this, you're going to end up with a lot of trash. Now, maybe you want to keep it for the tridents or smelt the gold, but we'll also build a disposal system for all of the non-stackable items. Now, normally, I don't care about the experience from farms. I usually just throw it into lava or let a skulk catalyst eat it, because most farms just can't compete with, like, trading with villagers. However, this one's pretty good. I mean, in 10 seconds, I got to level 10. In 15 seconds, we got to level 14. Like, that's, that's pretty good. And now again, all of these tests were for the maximum size version, two max size spawning areas in a split density area. But you could technically always build these at any size that you want to. However, since this was specifically designed for split density, you might check out some of my other videos on mob farms if you want to build it smaller. Here are the materials that you will need in order to build this farm. Now all of the stuff at the top is for your collection system and item sorter. Then all of the stuff in the middle is kind of the generic stuff that you will just need regardless of how big you make it. Now you will need more leaves, more blocks, and some of the stuff like the glass is kind of optional and the magma is totally optional. And of course, it's always nice to have impaling on your trident, but if you don't have that, it's totally fine. You can use regular tridents as well. Then all of the stuff at the bottom is per layer. And the coral fans are totally optional. They are up to you. The first thing to do is decide where to build this. Now, of course, you can't build this above a mushroom island, but you can build this anywhere else. I would, however, recommend building this above ocean and not land. This will guarantee that you don't have to spawn proof any area, and oceans tend to have better rates for mob farms. Now, if you're playing on the default simulation distance of Sim 4, you can just go up by a full stack of blocks or scaffolding. But if you're playing on a higher simulation distance, go up by two full stacks of blocks or two full stacks of scaffolding. Then once we're up here, we need to measure out four chunks. Now, whether you use a resource pack or you use chunkbase.com or a calculator is all totally up to you. Either way, we just need to mark out four chunks and measure to see where the center of those chunks are. Then next to one of the farthest chunks right here in the center, we're going to start building by going out by eight blocks in the center of that chunk. Then we can break out the first two blocks, and on the eighth one, we're going to go up by two. Then on the sixth and seventh block, we're going to go up by one, so that we will be left with this platform that will be aligned with the center and two blocks away from the chunk border. Now on top of these two blocks, we're going to place magma, and you don't have to use magma. You can just use solid blocks if you want to. Then on the side of those magma, we're going to place coral fans. And again, the coral fans are totally optional. Both the magma and the coral fans will improve the rates, but if you don't want to use them, it will still work. Now from the magma, we're going to go back by eight blocks, and on the eighth block, we're going to go up by one. Then from here, we're going to go back by three solid blocks, and then three optional magma, so that this top platform is seven blocks long, then the bottom one is eight blocks long, to the hole, and do this on both sides. So both sides will have an eight long platform going up into a seven long platform. Then right here on the front, if you want to see the mobs being killed, you can use glass, but if you don't care, you can just use solid blocks. But starting on the edge of the platform, we're going to go diagonally up by three rows of either blocks or glass, so that we will be left with a two tall hole and a one tall hole. Now cover up this hole with four blocks, 
Again, these can be glass or solid, totally up to you. But on the left side, the bottom one actually needs to be a top trap door, right next to the one tall hole. Then under that trap door, we need a bottom slab, and then surround this bottom slab in blocks, just to close it in. Then we need one water bucket here on the back on the opposite side from where the trap door is, so that the water will flow toward the trap door. So if the trap door is on the left, the water bucket needs to be on the right side of the back. Next up, we need to place some temporary blocks here in the front so that we can place two pistons one block away from our diagonal glass facing toward the water. Then another temporary block with two more pistons, like so. So these pistons will be touching the corners of those blocks and have one block of air in front of them. Now on top of the bottom ones, we need to place redstone dust. And now on the right side, we need to build an X out of solid blocks. Then on the bottom right one, we need to place a redstone dust, then a repeater here at the top facing toward that dust with a torch on the side of that center block. And this should cause the pistons to start clocking. Now place a temporary lever and turn it on just to make it stop for now. And that's it for your trident killer. Now we need to surround this canal in solid blocks, both to block out the light, but also to trap in the mobs. So we're gonna go just up by three blocks all the way around this canal so that the top platform has a two block wall and the bottom platform has a three block wall. So just go all the way around, completely encasing this canal. So again, the top part will have a two block tall wall and the bottom one will have a three block tall wall going all the way around. Then inside this canal on both ends, we need to place two buckets of water. And since water flows eight blocks, it should flow directly up to the side of your hole and no further. This is also a nice way to measure to make sure everything is built at the correct length. But I kind of forgot to do this is why we skipped ahead. Now on the topmost block of your canal, here in the front toward the trident killer, we're gonna go back by five blocks all the way across and then fill it in so that we are left with a six wide platform made up of solid blocks that is completely aligned with your canal. And now we need to surround the canal and your six wide platform in a two tall wall. So just go all the way around two tall so that you are left with a six wide platform that drops off into the canal and has a two tall wall all the way around. Then we're gonna cover this platform in scaffolding so that your entire six wide platform is covered in scaffolding. Now above the canal, diagonally up from the scaffolding, we need to place a row of signs that will prevent the water that we place on top of the scaffolding from flowing into your canal. And once you get that done, now we need to place coral fans underneath this row of signs on the side of the topmost solid block. And these are optional. They will improve the rates, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Now to place in the water. So on the backmost row above the scaffolding, we need to place a water bucket on every single block, not every other block, and be sure not to aim at the scaffolding when you place the water. Then go up by one more block all the way around, and we're gonna cap this off with solid blocks directly above where the water is. So everywhere that there is scaffolding, there will be a solid block directly above the water on top of that scaffolding. And that is the bottom most spawn platform complete. Now we need to basically do the same thing, but on the back. So now go back by five blocks aligned with your canal all the way across so that you are left with a six wide platform that is aligned with your canal, like so. Now surround all of this in a two block tall wall, just like we did before, so that you will be left with two six wide platforms completely aligned with the center canal and a two block tall wall surrounding the entire thing. Then place a layer of scaffolding on top of both platforms Place in your signs, your coral fans, and your water. Just remember that the signs need to be diagonally up from the scaffolding above the canal so that it blocks the water from flowing down into the canal. And if you do want to use coral fans but you don't have enough, I'll be sure to link a farm for that in the video description. So be sure to check that out. It is super duper easy to build. Then place in your water, making sure not to flood any of the scaffolding, and you are totally done. Now we need to build this six more times going up. So when you're done, you will have one extra platform here at the bottom in the front, and then seven double platforms on the front and back going all the way up. At the maximum size, of course. If you want to make this smaller, 
just build less platforms. But once you've built seven double platforms going up, above the one on the back, we need to cap it off. So either using leaves or tinted glass or regular glass, that is all totally up to you. If you use tinted glass, you won't actually have to build a light blocking platform up in the sky. But if tinted glass is expensive, as I understand it is, we can just use leaves. So just cover the entire back platform in either leaves or tinted glass, going all the way up to the edge of your canal. And then on the front platform, we can just keep using solid blocks because we can build two more spawning platforms. But everywhere that there is leaves or tinted glass, whichever you used, needs to continue to be leaves or tinted glass because we don't want to block surface spawns on the topmost layers. But here on the front, we can just continue using solid blocks to build the final two platforms. So just like before, place in your scaffolding, your signs, your coral fans, and your water. And again, we can build two more of these layers going up. So the front side of the farm will have a total of 10 platforms, and the back side of the farm will have a total of seven platforms. But when you're done with these top two, we need to cap this one off using either leaves or tinted glass as well, so that we are left with this. Now, if you used tinted glass instead of the leaves, you don't have to build an upper light blocking platform. However, if you used leaves, we need to block out the light. So we need to go up by 20 blocks and we need to build a frame out of solid blocks that is aligned with the walls of the farm. So no solid blocks above where the spawn platforms are, just the walls of the farm. So this frame will be 16 by 34 and aligned with one of the corners of the farm. Now inside of this frame, we need to fill completely with leaves and it has to be leaves because we do not want to block surface spawns or it will severely affect the rates. But then from one of the corners, we need to go out in each direction by nine solid blocks and then connect these diagonally together, also using solid blocks, and then do this on all four corners and then fill all of this in. So when you're done, it will look like this. Now we just shaved off the corners to save on some blocks, but if you want to make it a perfect rectangle, you totally could. Now we also don't really want wandering traders and stuff to spawn up here, so I would recommend covering all of the solid blocks in either slabs or buttons, but not the leaves. Leave the leaves alone. And even if you built a smaller version, I would recommend building the light blocking platform at the same height. Just in case you ever decide to expand it to the full size later on, I would recommend building your light blocking platform 60 blocks above your chunk markers. That way you won't have to change it if you do decide to expand. But with that, our spawning platform is complete and it should start spawning mobs. So we need to throw a single trident in front of all four of the pistons. Ideally, these tridents should have impaling five, but really, if you don't have impaling, don't worry about it. It will still kill the mobs all the same. And of course, you can always build a platform right here to make it easier to access the tridents later on, but be sure to test it. And now we need to build a collection system. We're gonna start off by placing a solid block under that slab. Now I'm really sorry about that. I actually meant to start this whole thing one block higher, specifically for this one block right here. You know, but just remember that you can place down a bucket of water so that you can kind of swim down and place that block. But once you get that block placed, we're just gonna carry this line of blocks all the way over to the center of our four chunk area. So it's going to go through two chunks, then on the chunk border here in the center, we're gonna clear out some of our markers and go over by two blocks. So we have three blocks away from our center four markers. And we're gonna place a dirt on the fourth block, surround that dirt in solid blocks. Then on all four sides of that dirt block, we're gonna go up by 18 blocks. 18 glass or 18 solid blocks, that is totally up to you. All this is is a bubble elevator for us to go up to our AFK spot and for items to go up to our item sorter, as well as the experience. But then place a bucket of water plant a kelp on top of the dirt, place a bucket of water here at the top, and then grow the kelp all the way up to turn it all into water sources. You know, or any way that you want to make a bubble elevator is totally up to you. It just needs to be 18 blocks tall. You know, but then don't forget to replace the dirt with soul sand if you did use this method, and you will now have a bubble elevator. Then come up here, and we're gonna build our AFK spot. And we just need to build a platform 
directly aligned with our center markers for the four chunks. So right here is the center of all four of those chunks, and we're going to place four glass panes just for us to stand in. And those glass panes are totally optional. It just makes sure that you are AFKing in the correct place and can't move around. But diagonally up from our four marker blocks toward our bubble column, we're going to place a solid block with a lever on it. And now we just need to run a signal from this lever all the way down. So if you want to do this in a different way, you totally can. But to keep things clean, I like to use dust and glass going diagonally down, since the glass won't pinch the dust. But turn on the lever, and just start going diagonally down with dust and glass until the signal dies out. Now of course, this will be kind of awkward to build in survival, especially going from top down, so I would recommend building a temporary row of scaffolding right next to this, so that you can place the glass and dust as you go along. So just keep building this down until the dust dies out. Then on the last active dust, we actually want that one to be on a solid block, and we want that solid block to be toward our trident killer. So we're going to switch that out with a dust right there, then a redstone torch on the side of this block, and really how you run the signal from the lever to the trident killer really doesn't matter. As long as it gets there, it is totally fine. All it is is a lever connected to the trident killer through redstone dust. There is nothing fancy about it, so however you want to run it is totally fine. But that bottommost row of blocks that we placed from under the slab to our bubble column needs to have walls to trap in the items in experience so that they flow from the kill chamber over to our bubble column. And this hole is where the other side will connect to, but for now, just close it off. That way, if we just want to use one side for now, it will still work. And then once we build the other one, we can just poke out that hole and connect it all together. So now go and turn off that lever so that that torch is on, and we're going to run dust from this torch or from that lever all the way over here and have that dust pointed into this block right here. Then on the other side of that block, we're going to place a repeater pointed into that block with the dust on top. So that repeater can be powered by that dust, and now we just need to add more repeaters so that the signal is strong enough to make it from our new lever to our trident killer. And remember that you can always place solid blocks before and after a repeater just to conserve a little bit of dust. But you can always just throw repeaters down, that's totally fine as well. But when you're done and that repeater is turned on, you can now break that lever and the clock should remain off. Now for the water stream. So place a bucket of water so that it's flooding that slab and then wherever that water dies out, we're going to break out the next two blocks and replace it with either pack ice or blue ice. Place buttons on top of the ice, and then flood the second button. Then just keep repeating this process. So after the water stops, break out two blocks, replace them with pack ice with buttons on top, and flood the second button. Except this last one, we're going to replace the block that has water on top of it with pack ice, then replace these three blocks also with pack ice, including the one that has the button on it. Now when we break this block, the water from the bubble column is going to flood out, but just replace the button and all will be okay. Then place a button right there on the very last water, and a water bucket in the corner. Now the water stream will carry items over to the bubble column, and then the bubbles will shoot those items up into the sky. <laughs> now this isn't really ideal, you know, it's fun to watch, but we really don't want items flying up into the sky. So we want to build a roof on top of this to block the items, but we want it to be big enough to allow us to fit through. So just go up by two blocks on each side and have a third block in the center. Then connect this to your AFK spot to funnel the experience. And once you make it to this point, you can now remove your chunk markers on the side that we built. Don't remove them on the other side just yet because you might need them later on. However, I wanted to go ahead and clean this up so that we can actually easily see what we've built so far. Now, if you've placed torches to block spawns on the trident killer, go ahead and break all of those, and we want the closest torches to be right here next to this final block of water, right before the first button. This ensures that nothing can spawn on the trident killer, but also prevents excess light from making it into the inside of the farm. But then past these torches, you can just spam torches wherever you want. Now all that's left is to build the item sorters. So one block away from your bubble column and your AFK spot, we're going to break out that block. Then down here from the side of your water canal, we're going to go up by 11 blocks. And then on this 11th block, we're going to build a tiny platform, just to give us some room to work with. 
it really doesn't matter how big this platform is, you can expand it as needed. But once it's built, go over to this side, and underneath the hole that you made, we're going to go down by two blocks, and then over by two blocks. So that we have a little tunnel that is two blocks long, and has a one block opening and a one block exit. Then right here, next to that block, we're going to go over by a row of blocks. Then right here, this should be aligned with the side of the bubble column. So there's no bubble column behind this block. And we're going to place three hoppers pointed into the row that we just made. Then we're going to skip a block and place four more hoppers pointed into that row. Then we're going to skip three blocks, and we need a hopper pointed down next to this fourth block, like so. Now we need three hoppers pointed into that last one. So this is what you will end up with. And don't worry, we will tweak things as we go. But now we need to build the item filter. So right next to the bubble column, we're going to build the first item filter. So two solid blocks, a target block, a temporary block so that we can place two solid blocks, and a piece of glass, then three redstone dust, with a comparator looking at the hopper through the block. Then a redstone torch on the front side of the target, and our filter is now complete. Now we just need to repeat this all the way down. So to do this, just everywhere that there is a solid block, build a solid block row all the way down until we reach this bottom pointing hopper. Nothing needs to be behind that hopper. But just carry all the blocks, all the targets, all the glass, all the dust, and all the comparators all the way down. Except right here, this very first hole doesn't need to have anything behind it. So we can just break out all of that. Then after the first four, this also doesn't need to have anything behind it. So the first hopper that is pointed off to the side doesn't need to have any of this redstone behind it. So we have a section of three, then a section of four, then a section of two. And so this is what you should end up with. And once you have your item filters built, we need to place a pack ice in this hole between the hoppers with a button on top. And now we need to build some walls to create a canal above the hoppers. So either use glass or solid blocks. And this needs to extend to include the very first hopper that is pointed off to the side. So the very first hopper that is pointed off to the side needs to have air above it. Then the next hopper needs to have a block above it, like so. Now place a bucket of water right there on top of your bubble column, and it should flow down into the hole, then across the hoppers, and get stopped by the button. Then next to the button, place another bucket of water above the hoppers, so that the water flows down all of the hoppers, and stops above the first hopper that is pointed off to the side. Now we just need to place in the chests. So the chest will go diagonally down from the topmost hoppers, one block away from the blocks in redstone. So all of the hoppers that are pointed into blocks need to have chest diagonally down in front of them. But the hoppers that are pointed off to the side are for your non-stackable items. So if you want to keep those, build it in the exact same way, with the chest facing toward the side. But if you want to get rid of the non-stackable items, place a front-facing chest right there at the top. But then next to the hopper pointed down, we're going to place some overflow chests in the exact same way as for our filters. So just a row horizontally going down. And now every single chest needs to have a hopper pointed into the back of that chest. So if you want to keep your non-stackable items, it will look exactly the same as the rest. But if you want to build a disposal system for the non-stackable items, we're going to start by placing a hopper under that chest. Then we need a temporary slab so that we can place a dropper facing down underneath this hopper. We need a dropper facing down just to have a place to put the lava. But then we can replace that slab with a solid block. And now we need six solid blocks diagonally behind the dropper, like so. Then we need a comparator that is looking at the dropper. And this comparator needs to be on subtraction mode, going into a solid block with dust on the other side of that solid block. So that comparator will be powering that dust through that block. Now we need a target block next to that dust, a repeater facing toward the front, a solid block next to the dropper, and two pieces of dust. And your disposal system's clock is now complete. Now we just need cactus or lava under the dropper. You know, for a cactus, you'd have to dig down a little bit and place a cactus kind of below the dropper. But for lava, you can either place a slab and place the lava through the slab, or you can just quickly place another block to trap it in. And in case you're wondering, the dust will look like it's connected to the dust on the filter. But target blocks do in fact pinch the dust, 
even though they don't look like it, they are in fact solid blocks, so that dust isn't actually connected. Now all that's left is to load your filters with the items that you want sorted. Your filter hoppers are the ones pointed into the solid blocks here at the top. So in your first one, you want to place rotten flesh into the very first slot, and then four singular stackable 264 items that will never be in the farm. So something like seeds. Now in the second one, you also want to place rotten flesh. You want rotten flesh in the first two filters because this farm produces so much rotten flesh that sometimes it just cannot keep up. But for all of the rest of the items, they don't need any more than just one filter. And keep in mind that overflow protected item sorters will always have 41 of the item being sorted trapped in the first slot. If you place in more filler items to have less items trapped, it is no longer overflow protected, meaning that if it fills up, it will drain the neighboring cells and you'll have to redo all of the filters. So all of your non-stackable items will go there, then all of your various items and overflow will end up down here at the end. If you want this to sort more items, just build more filters down here at the end. So instead of this being your overflow, just extend this out and build more filters. But really, aside from gunpowder, bones, flesh, string, eyes, and arrows, you won't get very many of the other items. You also want to protect yourself from phantoms, so be sure to place blocks above the AFK spot, and maybe even enclose the AFK spot in glass or something to keep you perfectly safe. Now all that's left to do is to build the spawn chamber and killing area the exact same way, just over on this side. So just rewind the video, and we're going to build it the exact same way, starting from the center of the chunk. But on this side, we want to place the trap door on the right side, rather than the left side, just so that the water streams for the item collection line up perfectly, so we don't have to like zigzag it or something. Just remember that the back water needs to be on the opposite side from where the trap door is, so that the water is flowing toward the trap door. This also means that our clock for our trident killer is going to be on the left side instead of the right side. So the X that is our clock is just going to be on the left instead of the right. This will just allow this water canal to align perfectly with the other water canal. Now really, this isn't necessary. It's just nice and easy. So right here, we're going to place a button just like before and just mirror everything exactly the same. So this water canal will still need edges or walls, you know, to keep in the water and the items and stuff like that. And then we still need to run redstone from the trident killer all the way over to our redstone torch, placing repeaters as needed to refresh the signal so that the top lever controls both killers. And with that, we are now finally done. So go up to your AFK spot, stand inside of the four glass panes, hold your looting sword, and flip the lever to let the items flow. And a big shout out to the Discord member Anawan. He helped me out tremendously while I was designing this farm. I had never actually built a water stream item sorter, but he builds those things all the time. He even builds crazy ones that use minecarts to sort things at times eight speed through water canals. So his expertise was highly valuable in helping me to understand how water streams work with item sorters. And as I was designing and testing different things to try to improve the rates, he was a great help in giving me someone to discuss some of the technical mechanics with. And if you're interested about the mechanics or the makings of this farm, I think I'll make a video talking about all of the different mechanics and why I made some of the decisions that I did. But if you like this, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment, and above all, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye!